Hi, it's Katrina, the lost city of Nan Madol. On the remote island of Pompeii, that's Pompeii, not Pompeii, is the ancient city of Nan Madol, nicknamed the Venice of the Pacific. The ruins here are over 1,000 years old and built on top of a coral reef. It's not only one of the oldest archaeological sites not on any heritage list, but also one of the most mysterious. The city was built of giant stones, and yet how they were transported onto the actual corals is completely unknown. All that remains today are the crumbled heaps of what were once walls and foundations. Archaeologists have found no carvings, no pieces of artwork. All they know is that a mysterious people called the Saudilur ruled the island for a millennium. The descendants of those people are still living on the island today, though not even they know the origins of Nan Madol. They view the ruins as a sacred place where spirits come out at night. We've known about the ruined city for decades, but it wasn't until recently that we really gained knowledge of just how big it once was. Satellite images have now captured the complex in its full glory. Researchers have identified 97 geometrically similar shapes all along the coastline of the island. They don't know what they were used for, if they were houses or temples, but they were definitely built by the ancient Saudilur. In total, thanks to the new information revealed by the satellites, researchers know the ruins of Nan Madol are composed of at least 750,000 tons of black rock. What these satellite images failed to do is solve the mystery. We still don't know what was happening on this island, which developed in complete isolation in the middle of the ocean. A Settlement in the Qatar Desert While using satellites to look for underground water in Qatar, researchers at the University of Southern California stumbled upon a lost settlement. The settlement is at least 3,600 years old, lost in the wasteland of Qatar's desert. The researchers found traces of the structure in the form of a large plot of rectangular land. It's not visible from the surface, only via satellite images. A person could walk straight through the entire site without ever knowing they had just walked through an abandoned village from prehistory. The only reason we know its age is because scientists went to the location and radiocarbon dated the soil. Sadly, who lived in this lost settlement and for how long is unknown. Judging by the size of the site, it was a formidable fortress. The inhabitants of the former settlement landscaped the area and practiced agriculture, keeping themselves alive by accessing groundwater deep beneath their feet. It's a shocking discovery because until recently, researchers believed the people of the Eastern Arabian Peninsula were completely nomadic during this time. But by finding the traces of a settlement, it's clear this wasn't the case. People were settling down and living in towns, and they were even resourceful enough to pull water from underneath the desert. It's just a bummer that the satellite images can't tell us who these mysterious desert citizens were, or where they went. Japanese Tomb of Mystery In Japan, there are mysterious tombs from ancient times that are known as Kofun. These tombs are some of the most overlooked archaeological sites anywhere in the world. These enormous tombs were built between the 3rd and 7th centuries, and each one was constructed in the shape of a keyhole. The Daisen Kofun is one of the biggest monuments on the planet, over 1,200 feet long and just about 100 feet tall. And it's only one. There are plenty of smaller ones scattered across the Japanese islands. Most historians believe they can be traced back to the 16th emperor of Japan, Nintoku. These smaller burials were for court officers or relatives of the royal family. The biggest were for the emperors themselves. One of the biggest mysteries surrounding the tombs is that there are no written sources to describe what they were used for or who was buried inside them. The tombs and their occupants remain an unsolved riddle as a result, and the Japanese government isn't helping to solve the mystery. Because the tombs are considered property of the first emperors, searching them is prohibited. This is also the result of cultural beliefs, as many Japanese practices and norms regarding death and the dead require respecting the burials of their ancestors. However, it has made it difficult to learn anything about them. Experts have turned to using satellites to find out more about the mysterious keyhole burials. Satellite images have now helped to reveal some new information about the tombs. Researchers discovered they are all oriented to face the rising sun. 
They also say the tombs were probably made in a keyhole shape as a representation of the sun rising behind a sacred mountain. Ancient Arabian Highways Archaeologists with the University of Western Australia have found evidence of primitive highways in Arabia. These highways, or more accurately, funerary avenues, were created during the Bronze Age. Researchers believe they were built as corridors linking one oasis to another, as well as pastures for farming. Because people of the desert obviously flocked to oases where water and plant life was abundant, it made sense for them to build roads from one to the other. But because this happened thousands of years ago, and nobody has lived in the desert since, the highways have mostly been erased, but they can now only be seen by satellite. The lead author of the study, Dr. Matthew Dalton, says these funerary avenues were the major thoroughfares of their day. They allowed people living all across the Arabian Peninsula to be more socially and economically connected 4,500 years ago. Even more interesting is that along the edges of the funerary avenues were erected thousands of tombs. By looking down at the area from space, researchers were able to identify more than 17,800 tombs along the roads. If anything, these new discoveries have created more questions than answers. Researchers still haven't identified all the settlements that these roads once connected. That the burial sites and the areas along them connected the settlements, however, is a fascinating aspect of the remaining mystery. Lost Coastal City Archaeologists have identified a lost settlement off the coast of Croatia that is 6,000 years old. The discovery was made by Mate Parika and partly by accident. He was examining satellite images of the coastline when he spotted a mysterious area of the seabed just off the shore of Korkula. As a professor at the University of Zadar, he recognized the foundations of a lost city when he saw it. He and a group of colleagues went to the site and dove to the bottom. What they discovered proved to be the remains of a Neolithic settlement from 4,500 BC. It was built on a small piece of land once connected to the main island, but as sea levels rose, the settlement became isolated and then completely submerged. In terms of archaeological evidence, they found stone tools, broken stone walls, and pieces of ceramic. But other than that, the sunken city is a mystery. Archaeologists don't know exactly which group of people built it, or if they even escaped devastation when it was plunged into the sea. Considering that the process that led to the city becoming completely submerged likely took some time, perhaps the people living here had more than enough warning to take all cultural identifiers with them when they abandoned the place. So now we have no idea who they were. Just want to give a big shout out to Charles Knight and Luna Moon. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos about amazing discoveries. The Mega Lightning Bolt In 2020, satellite images revealed the longest single lightning bolt ever recorded. According to the World Meteorological Organization, two storms set new records for lightning. One of the records was for the single bolt, captured by satellites at 477 miles long. To give you some idea of the scope, that's a single lightning bolt that stretched from Texas to Mississippi. That's the distance from New York City to Columbus in Ohio. The second record is almost as cool. Satellites captured the lightning bolt with the longest duration ever. This bolt of lightning lit up the sky with a brilliant flash for 17.1 seconds. This happened over both Uruguay and northern Argentina. And while this is pretty exciting stuff, a single bolt of lightning nearly 500 miles long is also kind of scary. According to Randall Cervani from Arizona State University, it's likely we will observe even greater extremes in the future. Not only because of new lightning detection technology in the form of satellites, but also because of a wilder and more unpredictable future as the Earth's temperatures continue to rise. Alabama Battle Site Experts believe they have just located the site of a legendary battle in Alabama. It happened long before the Civil War, about 500 years ago. Archaeologists say they used satellite imagery to identify the location of the prehistoric Native American village Mabila, where the Spanish conquistador Hernández de Soto fought against Chief Tuscaloosa of the Mississippi. Based on historical records left behind by Soto, 
Archaeologists have always known the Battle of Mabila occurred in what is now Alabama. They just didn't know exactly where. It wasn't until they scanned the ground from space using satellites that they found evidence of it in Mobile County. Here's the thing about the battle. It was terrible, with 2,500 Native Americans killed, along with 200 Spaniards. This was a wildly uneven battle. After the Spaniards claimed victory, they burned Mabila to the ground on October 18, 1540. This left behind fire-hardened clay, which is what researchers were looking for with the satellites. Unfortunately, the archaeologists haven't actually been able to start digging yet. They haven't found any physical evidence of the battle. They only know about a huge chunk of land with fire-hardened clay where the legendary fighting almost certainly went down. But I can't tell you exactly where the archaeologists believe the site to be, as they haven't announced that information to the public. Archaeologists are scared that if they give away the location of the site, hordes of amateur archaeologists will descend and damage the location looking for treasure. Mysterious Shell Rings In the southeastern United States, researchers from Pennsylvania State University have identified what appear to be shell rings and mounds. The researchers used deep machine learning to analyze data from synthetic aperture radars and satellite imagery. When the analysis was over, a series of mysterious structures were outlined beneath the heavy forest, where humans would never find them. The significance of these mysterious monuments is unclear. We know that shell rings were constructed from around 5,000 to 3,000 years ago, used as trade centers by the Native Americans. Other shell rings have been found in the region, almost always with imported products like ceramics and lithics from the Great Lakes region. This has led scientists to speculate that the shell rings were trading posts. People from all different tribes met here to exchange goods. But this was a long time ago. Almost nothing remains of these old sites. Nothing except mounds of dirt in places like rural Georgia. By using satellite images, researchers are now able to look beneath the dirt under the thick trees and see where ancient trading hubs lay buried and forgotten. Forgotten Fortress Actually, a collection of forgotten fortresses has been discovered in the Sahara Desert thanks to satellite technology. These are real-life sandcastles in the middle of the Libyan wasteland that were made by an ancient culture thousands of years ago. Considering how truly isolated the Libyan desert is, not to mention how politically unstable the country is, it's no surprise archaeologists on the ground have not discovered these sites. But by simply looking at photographs taken by satellites flying over the country, archaeologists could finally identify structures left behind by the Garamantes. The Garamantes ruled the Libyan desert from around 100 BC to 600 AD, but very little is known about them. They built their great fortresses over 620 miles south of the major city of Tripoli, one of the last archaeological expeditions here was in 2011, but it was cut short when civil war broke out. David Mattingly from the University of Leicester has been one of the archaeologists on the ground. He was astonished by the level of preservation in the ancient compounds, most of which were built of nothing but mud and brick. The walls have slumped slightly, probably because of ceaseless winds, but are still standing 13 feet tall in many places. The construction is just extraordinary. The other part that's impressive is that the Garamantes kingdom was beyond the reach of the Roman Empire. The Romans never made it down here, and so these fortresses mark the end of Roman occupation and the beginning of the powerful kingdoms of Africa. Sadly, it's currently impossible to do a lot of archaeological work here. Right now, all the experts can do is look at their satellite images of the new fortresses and try to work information out from those. Egyptian Metropolis in a spot located about 200 miles south from Cairo, recent satellite images have led to the discovery of a mysterious ancient settlement in Egypt dating back to 400 AD. That makes the metropolis 1,600 years old, give or take a few decades. The images from space show obvious signs of habitation throughout a large plot of land, suggesting a larger population of farmers living outside the main settlement. It never would have been seen otherwise because much of the site has already been destroyed by modern development. According to Sarah Parkak from the University of Alabama, the nameless city was once a regional trade center. Based on coins and scraps of pottery discovered by scientists on the ground, 
The people here traded primarily with civilizations in Greece, Turkey, and Libya. Sarah also says Egypt is blanketed in innumerable mysterious lost cities like this one, but they are still undiscovered. Many of them are probably hiding underneath modern cities, which bulldoze the old ancient settlements to make way for the modern urban sprawl. We don't know much else about this mysterious city yet, but Sarah is hoping to make more headway. She's also excited to make even more discoveries by scrutinizing satellite images of Egypt and the surrounding area. Avebury Avebury is a mysterious stone ring just 20 miles from the much more famous Stonehenge. And yet even though just about everybody on the planet is familiar with Stonehenge, Avebury is actually larger, older, and far more impressive. Avebury is the largest stone ring on the planet. Those who have visited Avebury say it mystified them more than when they visited Stonehenge. And yet because of its lack of popularity, it has undergone significantly less research and study. Archaeologists remain confused as to who built it or what exactly it was used for. But we do know a few things. Avebury is quite similar to Stonehenge in that it's a megalithic monument built and altered over several periods of time. In total, the diameter of the stone ring is 1,396 feet. Some of these stones are 20 feet tall, and the site encompasses 28 acres of land. At one time, there were 98 standing stones here, far more than at Stonehenge, but today only 27 remain. Avebury consists of three main circles. The two inner circles were built first, likely sometime around the year 2600 BC. The larger circle on the outside probably came much later. The big mystery is how the ancient people got all those stones there in the first place. It's the same issue with Stonehenge. The sarsen stones, as they are called, are huge. They had to be carved out of bedrock and then dragged across vast distances. Once at the site, workers then had to lift the 40-ton rocks straight up in order to position them as they appear today. The City of Agartha There is said to be a mysterious lost city hidden inside the very core of the Earth. We have no scientific proof of this, so take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. But according to legends, there is a paradise beneath our very feet, hidden inside a hollow part of the Earth that's home to giants and great beasts. It's here, in the very place King Kong is supposed to live, where the city of Agartha allegedly stands. The idea of a hollow earth with a great city inside it is not as old as you might think. In ancient times, people believed the inside of the earth was the location of the underworld. It wasn't until around the 17th century that scientists came up with the theory for the hollow earth. It was later disproved, and we know today the Earth is actually filled with liquid magma. But back in 1692, Edmund Halley proposed it was hollow. You might recognize Edmund as the one responsible for identifying Halley's comet. His ideas of a hollow Earth were based on magnetic readings. He thought the planet was built of several spherical shells that all spun in different directions around a central hollow core. This idea was taken and expanded on by other scientists over the next few centuries ultimately becoming diluted until wild theories became attached to the concept. The legends of the mysterious and ancient interior city included a myriad of details that seem impossible. There's supposedly a miniature sun inside the planet, which allows plants and animals to thrive. There are trees over 1,000 feet tall, humans twice the size of the ones on the surface, and the legendary city of Agartha where a supposed race of troglodytes live. The city under Death Valley Speaking of mysterious underground places, there is said to be yet another underground city that nobody has ever seen. But this one is a whole lot more believable. It's not located deep in the fiery core of the planet, but instead underneath the dry, crusted landscape of Death Valley in California. The city is said to be at least 5,000 years old, abandoned by an unknown race of underground dwellers. The only proof we have goes back to 1931 when a man named Bruce Russell allegedly discovered a complex series of tunnels beneath Death Valley. The discovery was reportedly made completely by accident. Bruce and his colleague Daniel Bovey were sinking a shaft for mining when the soil gave out beneath their feet and they tumbled into a mysterious cave. They found themselves lost in a catacomb of tunnels leading like roots beneath the very earth. But here's where this tale gets a little suspicious. The pair allegedly discovered the mummified remains of three enormous men hidden inside the tunnels. These men were over nine feet tall and clothed in attire made from dried sheepskin. There was even said to be a small treasure hoard of artifacts that looked as though they came from Egypt. 
there were hieroglyphics carved into the granite, and this was only at the surface. Bruce and Daniel believed there to be hundreds of miles of tunnels going all across southern Nevada and California. Because of how wild these claims were, no professional archaeologist bothered going into the desert to check it out. And eventually the stories and rumors of this fantastic supposed discovery died down. To make things even stranger, both Bruce and Daniel vanished. Bruce's car was found in a remote area of Death Valley, and he was never seen from again. And after that, Daniel also faded from the public eye. What became of these two men and their alleged discovery? That remains a total mystery. Caves of the Canary Islands On the island of Gran Canaria is the strange archaeological site of Cenobio de Valeron. The site consists of 350 spaces carved by hand into volcanic rock high up on the side of the mountain. When Spanish conquistadors first arrived in the 15th century, they had no idea what the strange honeycomb of caverns were used for. It appeared to them as though it may have been some kind of monastery. At first, the Spanish believed Cenobio de Valeron was a series of convent rooms. They thought the indigenous people must have put young noble women inside the caves, having them live alongside priestesses in order to keep their virginity intact until they were eventually married. It was a bizarre conclusion and unusual explanation for them to come up with, especially since the caves had actually been used for storing grain as a communal granary. Why do you think the Spanish colonizers came up with this oddly specific explanation for the caves? Let me know your theories in the comments. Cleopatra's Tomb a truly enormous statue of a Greek king was discovered inside the ruins of a temple in ancient Egypt. The statue was missing its head, but was still identified as King Ptolemy IV. He was one of the Greek rulers of Egypt during what is called the Ptolemaic period, which lasted from 332 to 30 BC. His broken statue was found at Taposiris Magna, located 28 miles from Alexandria. Some believe this ancient temple may be the final resting place of both Cleopatra and her lover Mark Antony. According to National Geographic, the statue was not the only amazing relic discovered here. Archaeologists have also found the remains of huge sphinxes guarding the temple, statues dedicated to the Egyptian goddess Isis, and other statues linked to the Ptolemaic rulers. Now here's a quick piece of history. Cleopatra, who was actually Cleopatra VII, was the final queen of Egypt in the Ptolemaic period. She and Mark Antony died after being defeated by Octavian, who went on to become the very first emperor of Rome. But no one has ever been able to find the burial place of Cleopatra. They have also never fully excavated Tabo Cyrus Magna and the surrounding area. Considering how much evidence they have found that this was a major temple built around the final days of Cleopatra, it would make sense that her tomb is somewhere nearby. It might even be underneath the ruined temple in an area archaeologists have not been able to find. It's shout out time! Want to say a big thank you to Jay Highway and Alan McCoy. Love you guys and thanks so much for supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and let me know what topics you'd like to see in future videos. Gyaju Caves The Gyaju Caves are located in a secluded gorge about 50 miles of Beijing, China. The caves are carved on the face of a steep cliff, occupying a total space of 24.7 acres. That makes this mysterious ancient place the biggest cliff residence ever built in China. In total, you can count 117 caves. So much detail was put into the construction of the caves that experts estimate it took at least 100 people five years to complete the project. But just what were the caves used for? They were probably simple rooms where people lived. No two caverns are exactly the same, ranging from 3 feet to 20 feet deep. They were basically something similar to ancient apartments that were carved into the side of the mountain. Some even had windows, lampstands where they could hang lights outside their doors, and archaeologists have also found stoves that they used to cook inside their tiny cave homes. At the very top of the cave city is one major duplex so big it's supported by four stone columns. These are to stop the roof of the cavern from crashing in. This duplex or penthouse likely belonged to the chieftain who ruled over the entire city. But here's where things get more mysterious. The ancient cliff dwellings were first found in 1984, and yet their origin remains unknown. Experts believe they were carved between 1,000 and 2,000 years ago. However, further evidence is severely lacking. Mysterious Arkansas Blowing Cave in Arkansas is supposedly a secret entrance to an underground world. One of the most popular myths surrounding this particular cave is that it leads to an underworld occupied by human-like beings who never see the sun. 
There is supposedly a hidden crevice deep inside the cave which can transport one into the world of these underground beings. Bruce Allen Walton claimed that as he was exploring Blowing Cave in the 1990s, he met a race of extraordinarily tall people between 7 and 8 feet in height. These mysterious humanoids were living down in the dark underground caves, far from the light on the surface. After Bruce left, he wrote a book called The Underground Empire all about his exploits. And while this may sound like science fiction, it's not the first time a race of giants has been found underground in North America. Don't forget about the underground giants allegedly living under Death Valley. It could very well be that inside cave systems hidden to modern humans, there are entrances to a vast, almost unbelievable subterranean world of giant mythological beings. Do you wish this were true? Let me know in the comments below. Tim Gad. Tim Gad is essentially Africa's Pompeii. 1,500 years after the Roman Empire crumbled, its power can still be seen in surprising places, like here, in a secluded part of Algeria. The founding of Timgad goes back to Emperor Trajan in the year 100. It thrived as a proper Roman city in North Africa before it was sacked by vandals 300 years later. It was reoccupied briefly by a community of Christians, then sacked by Berbers. By the 7th century, Timgad was completely abandoned. Because it was in such an isolated area of the Algerian desert, it was gradually covered by sand and forgotten. It wasn't discovered again until Scottish explorer James Bruce came across it in 1765. But no excavations began until Algeria came under French rule in the 1880s. Because of the dry climate, the fact that nobody came to destroy the ruins and that nobody has lived here since the Romans, Timgad is exceptionally well preserved. Much like the volcanic eruption near Pompeii allowed life there to be perfectly frozen in time, visitors here can walk through the Roman avenues and even step into houses and see where Romans once sat to have their dinner. Quelap Quelap is a truly massive fortress of a city, also called the Walled City in the Clouds. It was built by the Chachapoyas culture in Peru. They were known as the Warriors of the Clouds, a distinct people who resided in the cloud forests of the Andes at the very edge of the Amazon rainforest. They weren't as influential as the Inca, but they were unique and were highly advanced. Quelap was built on a limestone ridge 900 feet above sea level. It overlooks a huge swath of the Utcubamba Valley, which would have given the occupiers a major advantage for defense. They could have seen an army coming from miles away, and their high walls would have prevented any kind of siege. It was a hugely impressive structure, established in the 6th century AD, then built continuously for the next 600 years. Archaeologists believe construction continued non-stop to make the walls more and more robust. It was during this time that the southern Huari were expanding their borders, and the Chachapoya needed a stronghold that could never be defeated. Alas, they were beaten by the Inca in the 15th century. We don't know how this happened, but some historical accounts suggest the Chachapoya met the Inca on the battlefield. They were overwhelmed by the Inca forces. Then, without enough people defending the walled city in the clouds, the Inca seized the walled complex, and the battle for Quelap was complete. The Elora Caves The Elora Caves in India are spread over a distance of 1.2 miles. Cut into the faces of basaltic cliffs, there are 34 caves in total. Twelve of these caves are dedicated to Buddhism, which date all the way back to 200 BC. Then, in the middle of the cliffs are 17 Hindu temples from about 700 years later. Finally, five of the temples are dedicated to Jainism, made 1,000 years ago. If you aren't sure what Jainism is, it's a religion still practiced today. It teaches salvation of the soul by perfection through living multiple lives. It also preaches non-harm to all living creatures. This mysterious place is dedicated to three separate religions, making it a rare sight anywhere on the planet. Archaeologists generally believe Elora served as a group of monasteries for monks and hermits. Most of the caves were nothing but sleeping cells where the monks could rest. The caves not used for monks as dorms were temples. Some of them are truly massive, having been made by removing over 200,000 tons of solid rock. The Kailasa Cave is by far the most impressive, excavated downwards into the rock, 164 feet deep. It's 100 feet wide at some points and has four internal levels. It was also carved with extreme detail, including huge monoliths, vast hallways, doorways, windows, and scenes from Hindu mythology. 
Among the depictions, there is a great carving of Vishnu, transforming into a man lion to battle a demon. What's great about these temples is that they are still visited by worshippers 2,000 years after they were made. We may not know the names of the builders or every mystery of the caves, but they live on as places of pilgrimage even today. Thanks for watching. Which of these mysterious ancient places would you like to visit? The Skull from Gaul. A very strange burial was discovered in France from the days of ancient Gaul. The bodies of the deceased were found lying on their stomachs or hunched over on their sides, which was something highly unusual for the time. People were normally buried much like they are today, laid on their backs in the ground. Even stranger was that some of the heads had been decapitated and buried enclosed by a pair of horse skulls. Archaeologists have no idea what these extremely unusual burials mean. They've suggested it could be a new type of funeral practice never before identified, or it could just be one really odd burial. There are no other examples in all of ancient Gaul of people being buried with their skulls stuck between those of two horses. But one thing the Gauls definitely did do was embalm the heads of their enemies. Ancient Gauls who lived in what is now modern France were extremely brutal warriors. Archaeologists already knew that they cut the heads off their enemies and displayed them as trophies. They would even hang severed heads from the necks of their horses. But after experts found traces of conifer resins on the remains of an Iron Age settlement in the south of France, they had irrefutable proof of the embalming. The Gauls embalmed severed heads with cedar oil to preserve them as trophies for years to come. Warriors filled their houses with preserved human skulls like they were ordinary decoration, reconstructing an ancient rib cage. Scientists recently took an ancient rib cage from 60,000 years ago and reconstructed it. And while putting together an old rib cage is obviously pretty creepy, the results of the study were absolutely fascinating. As it turns out, Neanderthals were not hunched savages like previously believed. Instead, the digital reconstruction of the Neanderthal rib cage has shown that the hominids had better posture than modern people. They walked taller and straighter than us, and they even had stronger lungs. This is in stark contrast to the view most people have of Neanderthals. We often picture a more primitive stance, similar to other great apes dragging their knuckles through the dirt. But based on the evidence of the rib cage, that's all completely false. Neanderthals had a spine bent inward, forcing their chest to puff out. It also made them tilt a little bit backwards, resulting in a perfect posture. Dr. Azir Gomez Olivencia from the University of the Basque Country says the Neanderthal spine is located inside the thorax itself, which gave them far more stability. Wonder how they would handle sitting over a computer all day. Italian Witch Burial Archaeologists have uncovered the burial of what is believed to be a witch in Italy. We don't know if she really was a witch, but whoever buried her definitely thought so. It was in the town of Albenga where the experts uncovered the skeleton of a teenage girl who had been buried face down in the dirt. Burying a person on their stomach instead of their back was a clear indication in ancient times that they had been rejected by society. But it could also mean they were considered dangerous, maybe even capable of witchcraft. This particular grave was discovered by the Vatican's Pontifical Institute of Christian Archaeology. The burial ground was built sometime around the 5th century, or 1,500 years ago. The alleged witch had been buried with her face in the dirt because of the old belief that when a person died, their soul left their body through the mouth. Burying a person face down would prevent their tainted soul from leaving. This would result in the witch being stuck in a kind of hellish purgatory, with her body deep in the dirt and her soul unable to find release. While barbaric, it certainly was less brutal than the burning death many others accused of witchcraft suffered over the years. Hard Labor in Ancient Egypt Archaeologists have found evidence of hard labor and hard times in the bones of the remains found in an ancient Egyptian cemetery. The cemetery is in the city of Amarna, the great capital of the heretic pharaoh Akhenaten. On the outside, the city appears to have been a paradise. Archaeologists have found wall carvings depicting fat oxen, storehouses bursting with grain and fish, and musicians serenading feasts and banquets held by the great pharaoh himself. But new research has shown life was not so great for ordinary people. Researchers analyzed dozens of skeletons from a commoner's cemetery hoping to find some evidence of this shared wealth. 
What they found instead was malnourished children, adults with broken bodies from a lifetime of hard labor, and the physical evidence of disease and injury. Jerome Rose of the University of Arkansas says the bodies excavated from the Commodore Cemetery are among some of the most disease-ridden and stressed corpses that have ever been found in Egypt. These people were miserable. Those in power in ancient Amarna may have been living a life of luxury, but the evidence shows that everyone else back in 1350 BC was doing much more poorly. It's been estimated that about 30,000 people lived at Amarna during its brief 15 years as the capital. While 10% of the population were wealthy elites, the remaining masses were poor peasants. Two-Headed Giant A two-headed giant was supposedly discovered in Patagonia back in 1673, named Cap Dois. He stood a whopping 12 feet tall and is currently being held at a museum in Baltimore. To understand this a bit better, we need to go back to the legendary explorer Ferdinand Magellan. When he arrived in Patagonia, he believed it was where giants lived. Everything was huge, the landscape was vast, it only made sense for Patagonia to be inhabited by giants. Then when Magellan and his men went to the beach to explore, they encountered natives of which they claimed were twice as large as any normal man. Of this, they weren't entirely wrong. The indigenous people of Patagonia, specifically the Tehuelche, were taller than average Europeans. It's likely Magellan exaggerated the height difference to get more attention back home. Cap Dois was allegedly found by Spanish sailors on the beaches of Patagonia in 1637. According to the stories, he was captured by the Spanish, brought onto their ship, and they strapped him to the mast. Ultimately, he got free and there was a struggle, leaving the Spaniards with no choice but to kill him with a spike through his chest. They then mummified his body to be taken back to Europe. His body was stuffed, preserved, and paraded around Britain and the United States well into the 19th century. The two-headed giant was the main attraction at freak shows across the country. But just how real is Cap Dois? Well, nobody actually knows, but it is unlikely that a person could grow to be 12 feet tall. The tallest person in recorded history was Robert Wadlow, and even he didn't break 9 feet. Not to mention, Wadlow only had one head. Do you think there was a real two-headed giant living in Patagonia? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Threaded Bone An international team of archaeologists has made a rather creepy discovery in Peru. They looked at 200 examples of human vertebrae that had been threaded onto reed posts from the years 1450 to 1650. This period was the end of the Inca civilization and the beginning of European colonization. Suffice to say, it was a very turbulent time in South American history. There was widespread famine, lots of disease, and frequent desecration of indigenous graves by Europeans. The indigenous people were not very happy about this. Researchers from the University of East Anglia discovered the indigenous peoples came up with a way to reconstruct the dead after being so blatantly disrespected by the Europeans. They threaded vertebrae together on posts in a type of ritual to put their dead ancestors back together. It was sad for the native people who saw their culture ancestors and homes utterly destroyed by strangers. To give you a rough idea of just how brutal and ruthless the Spanish were at the time, listen to this. The indigenous population declined from 30,000 heads of household in the year 1533 to less than 980 in 1583, just in the Chinch Valley. In only 50 years, nearly 90% of the indigenous population had been wiped out. The Spanish then took to looting graves. But they didn't just remove the gold and silver treasure, they also broke apart the skeletons of the dead. Mass Plague Burial A very rare mass plague burial site has been identified in England. The site was found on the grounds of a monastery hospital from the 14th century in Lincolnshire. Just shy of 50 skeletons have been excavated by professional archaeologists with the University of Sheffield. The skeletons, most of which were found to be children, all died directly because of the Black Death. We've all heard of the plague before, but here's a quick recap on just how terrible it was. From between 1346 and 1353, somewhere between 75 and 200 million people in Europe were killed by the disease. It was the worst pandemic ever recorded in human history. Many local communities found themselves completely overwhelmed when the Black Death swept through town. 
It often killed so many people that it would turn entire villages into ghost towns. Here in Lincolnshire, that's probably what happened. 27 children and 21 adults died at almost the exact same time, forcing those who remained to bury their dead in a mass grave. Drowned Fishermen In a mass grave on the other side of the world, researchers from the University of Southampton discovered the skeleton of a fisherman who died 5,000 years ago. The discovery was made near the coast of northern Chile, and it's honestly pretty incredible. This is how much information archaeologists can get from nothing but a few bones. They were able to identify the fisherman as being between 35 and 45 at the time of death. The condition of his bones showed that he had rowed a boat frequently, used a harpoon, and probably harvested shellfish. Researchers also found microscopic marine particles present in his bones. These particles include fossilized algae and parasitic eggs. They also found sediment and diatoms, which suggests the man drowned in very shallow seawater. By putting all these clues together, archaeologists have been able to paint a picture of his last moments in life. They believe the fisherman suffered some kind of accident while harvesting shellfish just a few feet from the beach. He drowned in the shallow water, was brought back to land, and then buried at the local Neolithic cemetery. Did you know that scientists could get this much information about a person's life just from a simple bone fragment? Let me know in the comments. Ancient Child Mummies Inside an ancient tomb near Lima in Peru, archaeologists uncovered six mummified children. Their tiny skeletons were found wrapped in cloth inside the grave of one man. The experts believe these kids were sacrificed so that they could accompany the dead man into the afterlife. He was some kind of noble, perhaps a highly respected political figure. Nobody has been able to figure out his name, so his identity is still a mystery. What we do know is that the six children were likely killed for no other reason than to join the mystery man in the next life. What researchers are working on now is trying to figure out why. Why would a man need six children to accompany him to the netherworld? Archaeologist Peter Van Dalen says the children may have been close relatives. They were discovered placed at the entrance of his tomb, each one stacked on the other. Perhaps they were his relatives. They could also be a sacrifice or their bodies were present for some completely unknown reason. Either way, this is one of the creepiest archaeological discoveries ever made in Peru. The Monk in the Buddha A Buddha statue made 1,000 years ago in China was on loan to the Drents Museum in the Netherlands. Researchers at the museum were excited to have the statue and were curious to see what was inside of it. They knew there was something there, they just didn't know what. So they took it to the Meander Medical Center in the town of Amersfoort. Here, the statue was put through a medical examination. CT scans revealed a human body was actually inside the statue. It turned out the statue was holding the mummified remains of a Buddhist monk sitting in the lotus position. The discovery was pretty mind-blowing. The archaeologists then extracted bone material for DNA testing and biological samples from the mummy's chest. What they found was that the mummy had their organs removed and replaced with pieces of paper somewhat similar to other ancient mummification rituals. However, there are some theories as to who the Buddhist monk was. He may have been Master Lui Chuan from the Chinese Meditation School. He died in the year 1100 and likely had himself turned into a living Buddha through the process of self-mummification. He would have starved himself, ate nothing but herbs and seeds to stop bacterial growth when his body died, and drank poisonous tree sap to keep the insects out of his corpse. After years of this, he had himself put inside of a statue and then starved to death, becoming a living Buddha. Thanks for watching! Which of these bizarre discoveries creeped you out the most? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!